Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I'm having to play around with a blue hour shot that I took in Canada a few years ago and just sharing my workflow and some tips for getting better blue hour photos. Let me show you. We'll just crack into it. This is the Empress Hotel in Victoria. Absolutely beautiful place. It was blue hour, as you can see. The lights are on, which are kind of yellow. This guy's blue. There's a lot of blue everywhere, but that yellow and blue interplay because they're opposite on the color wheel, they're complementary, and they look really good together, and I want to accentuate that in my photo. Now, I've already erased a couple of spots and a couple of little minor things, and I cropped it and probably straightened it because I always need to straighten my photos. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start here with Accent AI, and I'm going to use a Sky Enhancer as well. And so I'm gonna do about that. And then I'm gonna hop over here to the light tool. Now, in this case, I'm actually gonna to go to the right a little bit. Um, I normally go to the left, but with the blue hour photo, I may end up taking the temperature a little bit warm because I don't wanna overdo the blue. Uh, tint is fine for now. I'm gonna get a little bit of contrast. Highlights are coming down about uh, all the way, to be honest. It's, uh, it's just a little too bright there, and the shadows are gonna come up just a little bit. So, you know, I think already we've made the photo a bit brighter and that sort of thing, but there's a lot I wanna do, and I've got a couple of cool tricks, so please watch to the end. Um, I've got a cool little trick to help you, um, you know, get a little bit of extra pop out of a photo. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and add some structure here. I'm gonna go like mid to high 40s, but this, of course, is gonna be painted in. So, I wanna paint it into these buildings over here and I wanna paint it into the boats. Now I'm going kinda of quick because it's a video. Um, I recommend taking your time and you know maybe getting a little bit closer, but truthfully, because that stuff's in the distance, like the roof of the, uh, the hotel itself, you don't have to get everything just right in order to make it uh, look better. Now I'm gonna come over here. By the way, at least on a Mac, there's a cool trick. If you click your mouse there once, and then hold down the Shift key, and bring your mouse down here, it makes a straight line on the mask. You can do it again here, like that, and then come up here and go like that, and you can see how it's making a straight line. And then I can just come in and fill in these little areas. It would be a lot quicker if I had used a little bit bigger brush, but we're about done with it. And there we go. If I wanna show you the mask, I can just show you that. Basically just added a little bit of structure, but that straight, uh, Straight line tip comes in pretty handy. Again, that's on a Mac. I, I don't have Windows, so I apologize. I don't know if it works the same on Windows. We're done with structure, and now we're gonna get into color, and there's some adjustments I need to make here that are really, I think, gonna help the photo kind of pop. The first thing is the hue of the yellow. I want it to be less yellow and a little bit more towards orange, so I'm gonna go to the left, and that's, that's simply personal preference. It's obviously not a requirement. None of this is a requirement. It's just editing. But I like to change the hue on my yellows and make them a little bit more orange. I'm now going to go into saturation, and I'm going to take that blue saturation down by about 20 because, again, I don't want to overdo the blue. It's very blue, very blue, and it is my favorite time of day to shoot in cities when uh, everything is blue, but then lights are on in the building, and that yellow and blue interplay, I think, just looks great. And here in the luminance, I'm going to take the yellow luminance down a little bit. Um, in other words, I'm going to darken the yellow, and I'm also going to darken the blue a little bit, which is going to actually create it, uh, make it a little bit uh, appear to be a little bit darker or later into the evening, into the blue hour, than uh, it really was. But I just like that move, kind of doing a play here between the yellow and the blue. Let me turn off color and show you what that did to the photo. There it is before. And there it is now. So just a little bit deeper, richer blue, a little less saturated, and a little bit of a hue change and luminous change in the uh, yellow. Uh, speaking of yellow, I'm going to go to golden hour. And I like to use golden hour in these kind of photos because it does bring up and kind of pop those warmer tones, which I think really helps them stand out a bit more against that blue, uh, which is obviously very dominant in the photo. So there it is before golden hour, and there it is after. It's kind of subtle. And of course, you can season to taste, but I like doing that. And then I'm going to go to Mystical, one of my favorite tools. And this is just kind of a mood tool, for lack of a better word. I know there's a mood tool um, for LUTs, but I think a Mystical is adding a little bit of that romantic lighting, which to me is mood. So I sometimes call it mood, not trying to confuse you there. But Mystical took me from that to that a little bit more contrast, a little bit softer, a little bit... Um, I don't know, moodier, whatever, you get it. And speaking of contrast, the next tool is super contrast. I've got a couple of moves here, and then we're gonna do some local adjustments. I didn't do anything with the highlights. In the midtones, I went to about a 25, and in the shadows, I went to about a 35, 
but I went negative on the balance. And again, this was just experimentation. I say this every time I use super contrast, just experiment, but look what it does. Let me turn this off. There's before super contrast, and then when I turn that back on, there it is after. It did brighten up the photo a little bit. I think it created a little bit more rich color. So if for some reason that's too much for you, go back up here to color, and you can pull the saturation of that blue down a little bit more. Because I was at negative 20, maybe you want to go to negative 30. We'll do that now just for the heck of it. But you can control that blue, so just keep that in mind. Contrast, um, it does create a little bit more pop and color, so you might need to go back and make some further adjustments up here if that uh, you know, suits your taste. Okay, and now a couple of local adjustments, and one of these is gonna be really fun. It'll be the second one. The first one um, isn't fun, but I think it's necessary. I'm gonna create a gradient mask, and I'm gonna drag it right over here because what I'm trying to do is get that uh, section of uh, that walkway and just kind of isolate that. And what I wanna do is just bring the exposure down a little bit. I'm trying to darken that area uh, because I don't really care about you spending too much time looking at it. And that's also gonna play well with my next move. I need to scoot that a little bit, maybe about like that. So there we go, that's a little bit darker. I'm gonna give it a little bit more contrast and I'm gonna pull the shadows down as well. Something like that. In fact, I'm gonna pull back the exposure a little bit. I don't wanna make it too dark, but all I'm trying to do is you know, I want your eye to kind of go towards those lights, and we're about to make that pop here in a second, but kind of towards those lights and across, uh, but I don't want you to linger in the foreground for two reasons. Number one, there's nothing in the foreground. It's just kind of boring, right? So uh, I wish I had shot this differently and perhaps been closer to that first lamp uh, or something, but I didn't. It is a photo that I took in like 2017, so you know, it is what it is. I think about things a little differently now, but regardless, the photos um, empty in the foreground. So I said two reasons. It's really one reason. It's just kind of empty and boring. So I kind of want you to not linger on that. So um, situations like this where I isolate a section of, you know, like man-made, you know, concrete or whatever, I would often bring up structure to kind of pop some of that detail. But I don't think I'm going to do that here because, again, I don't want to draw your eye to it. What I want to do is kind of have you skip over it as much as possible. So I've done that. Now here's the fun thing, and this is another basic local mask. And this one is going to be a radial mask. And what I'm going to do is grab this right-hand one, and I've put a dot right here. And all I want to do is create a mask that kind of mirrors where this drop of light from the uh, lamppost is. And what I'm going to do is warm it up. I'm going to go to about a 60, just creating a little bit more warmth where that light is falling on the concrete from that lamp. And I'm also gonna bump up the exposure a little bit of that section. So all I'm trying, that's probably too much, but all I'm trying to do is accentuate that shadow, uh, not the shadow, the, the light. And I might actually expand that a little bit and then pull this back. Just experiment, obviously every one of them is gonna be different. So I'm gonna do something about like that. And so as you can see, uh, let me just hide that. I've basically just created a warmer, brighter spot of light. In fact, I think it's a little too warm and I think maybe it's not bright enough. Experiment every, uh, that's too bright now. Anyway, you get the point. That's how you can accentuate a lamppost like that where a, a little pool of light is falling onto concrete. You can just go put a radial mask, increase the exposure and the temperature, warm it up, brighten it up. Just make it look like the light is a little more intense there than what your camera may have captured. So if I turn this off, there it is before. You can see there's a small little pool of light, but it's not very prominent. And when I turn it back on, you can see it, it looks quite a bit better. Probably need to play with the radial mask, shape it a little bit differently. I'm not gonna spend time getting it right, but that's a cool little trick and um, hopefully something that will help you with your edits. And the last thing I've got is just a vignette and all I wanna do is just pull this down a little bit, kind of tighten that up. That actually helps accentuate some of what we just did with that, uh, that little pool of light because I've darkened some of the edges, maybe a little bit of inner light as well. I would just be careful because it's already fairly bright in the center of the photo because the hotel is the thing that's giving off light here. So a little bit of a vignette to wrap it up and let me show you, that's what we started with. It was blue hour, I like the shot. There's a number of things I like about it, but there it is before and there it is now. And if I do the sliding window, you can see that we've made quite an impact on the photo. I think the blues really pop. I think the yellows look better. They're richer, they're a little bit more orange. Now again, that's personal preference. If you don't like it, that's understandable, but you can adjust those kind of things in the color tool to really balance out the difference between the blues and the yellows and kind of how they work. 
And then of course over here you can see that little pop of light we added. Really helps I think, is a fun little accent to add to the photo. And that's it my friends, that's some tips and some workflow suggestions for editing Blue Hour photos. Hope it helps. Thanks for watching my friends. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll be back soon with more videos. Have fun editing. I'll see you soon and adios.